In 1970, a cell of the FLQ, a radical left-wing Quebec separatist group, carried out the kidnappings of British Trade Commissioner James Cross on October 5th and lawyer Pierre Laporte on October 10th. James Cross was later released, but Pierre Laporte was found dead in the trunk of a car on October 17th. In an emergency response, Prime Minister Pierre Elliott Trudeau implemented the War Measures Act, placing the entire country under police lockdown. This was the first time in Canadian history that the War Measures Act had been implemented during peacetime. The federal government's response to the crisis was controversial, and it revealed the instability of liberal democracy. So why did these kidnappings lead to such a crisis within the federal government and threaten to destabilize the foundations of Canadian liberal democracy? The federal government justified the War Measures Act by declaring the crisis an apprehended insurrection. The Quebec provincial government's liberal reforms during the Quiet Revolution of the 1960s brought about a wave of French-Canadian nationalism and gave birth to numerous separatist groups. The FLQ was the most radical and far-left separatist group who sought independence through revolutionary means opposed to democratic processes. Nonetheless, the Liberal government found it convenient to associate the entire separatist movement with radicalism and violence. The truth is that there were a number of branches of the separatist movement that emerged from the decade of the Quiet Revolution, whose visions of sovereignty and their approaches to achieving it differed. Underlining the entire separatist movement as violent was misleading because it undermined the legitimate concerns of Quebec's French-Canadian majority. With the notion of Quebec independence circulating, the federal government categorized the October Crisis as ideological warfare. The government had the support of the vast majority of the Canadian population, but did not have the support of the intellectuals, university professors, students, and mass media who were major influencers of social opinion. Mass media was interpreted as a battleground and a means of rebuilding social consensus. If the government and the influencers of ideology were not on the same side, it would lead to political instability and threaten to awaken the revolutionary masses. Therefore, the federal government had to respond to the situation with caution, as to avoid allowing revolutionary ideas to spread by giving credence to the FLQ's cause. The federal government justified the War Measures Act by denouncing the intentions of the FLQ on the grounds that their violent actions threatened civil liberties and Canadian unity. The government demonized the FLQ's actions as an attempt to overthrow the democratic political structure of Canadian society through a parallel power and saw the War Measures Act as a necessary means to protect the freedoms of the individual. The implementation of the War Measures Act in itself was perceived by the media and intellectuals as a grave defection from the central tenets of liberal democracy because it restricted civil liberties. This was a counter-narrative to the stance of the federal government, who saw it necessary to infringe on civil rights in order to maintain civil rights. In addition, the federal government attempted to use notions of national pride and unity to undermine the FLQ's separatist goals. They attempted to appeal to the masses by suggesting that the creation of a sovereign Quebec would lead to the destruction of Canada. However, this marginalized Quebec by creating a sense of nationalism that pitted Quebec against the rest of Canada. In conclusion, the federal government's solution to the October crisis was to orchestrate a long-term plan designed to re-establish law and order and suppress any revolutionary ideologies by disenfranchising the separatist movement. The government adopted a new liberalism approach based on methodology to substitute the ideology-based form of liberalism which was thought to increase polarization and concede too much ideological scope to radicalism. In order to carry out progressive reforms, the federal government deemed it necessary to disassemble intermediary bodies and concentrate greater authority at the federal level.